Hello, welcome to this session of OpenMentor.net. In this session, we are going to see VB script arrays. Arrays are nothing but a group of variables with a common name. The same name will be used, but you will use subscript or index to denote a particular location. Look at this way of defining an array. I declare x, stating that it's an array. Within brackets, I am saying these are the elements in that array. So 10 is one element, 20 is another element, 30 is another element. Then to access a particular location in the array, I am using a subscript. This portion is called subscript. So x of 1. Unlike C, you have to use a normal bracket, not square brackets. So I am accessing x of 1. Usually the array start with a 0. This is the 0th position. This is the first position. This is the second position. There is a function called the L bound. The L bound will show what is the lower boundary of the array. U bound will show what is the upper boundary of the array. Now let us execute this function. When I do this, it says element x of 1 is 20, lower bound is 0, then upper bound u bound is 4. So if you go here, this is 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. That is why it is giving lower bound is 0, upper bound is 4. So if I want to print all the elements within the array, all I need to do is, anyway, I have to use a loop, for loop, for i equal to L bound of x to u bound of x. So that means we are using for next loop. This is a loop. The for loop has a simple syntax for a variable from some value to some value. Then the end for for is next. Now I am printing msg box i ampersand I am giving a space ampersand x of i. Okay, so let us print this. See what happens. So I am going from looping from lower boundary to upper boundary. Let us execute this. Lower boundary, the element 0 is 10, element 1 is 20, element 2 is 30, element 3 is 40, element 4 is 50. The loop terminates. So this is a simple for loop if you want to access all the elements in an array. You can use the for next loop with a variable lower boundary, upper boundary. So L bound and U bound are used for finding the array's lower boundary and upper boundary. There is one more way of defining arrays in VBScript. Let us see that. Look at this array definition. I have commented this portion. Now I have defined the array dim A of 5. That means this will go from 0 to 5. I have initialized only two elements, a of 1 equal to 5, a of 2 equal to 6. Rest of the elements I have not initialized at all. So I am doing another loop, L bound of a to U bound of a, print those values. Let us execute this one. The first element is 0, the location is 0, but it has printed no value over here. Location 1 of the array is 5 because I initialized it. Location 2 is 6 because I have initialized. 3, location 3 of the array does not have a value, location 4 does not have a value, location 5 does not have a value. So, if you have not initialized, it will be empty. So, you will not have anything stored in that particular location. But, if I try to print, okay, a of 6, I have defined the array only up to 5 locations, but I am trying to access the location 6. Let us see what happens over here. It says line number 12 subscript out of range number 6. That means the array subscript that we have used is not correct. We have defined the array only to 5 but we have accessed location 6 which is a violation in arrays. So you can define the arrays in two ways. 
there is a third way of defining the arrays which is called a dynamic array. Let us see that. Now look at this. This is called a dynamic array. In this, I have defined an empty array initially, dim a just brackets. Then I have used the keyword readim a of 5. Now I am printing the upper bound of the array. Then I increase the size readim a of 10. Then I decrease the size readim a of 3. Let us see what happens. So since this is declared as a dynamic array, depending upon the readim, it will change the size of the array. Let us see whether it really takes effect. After readim 5, the u bound is 5. Now I am doing a readim 10, u bound is 10. After readim 3, u bound is 3. So you need to be careful when you are doing the redefinition. If you are increasing the size of the array, you don't lose values. For example, I have got a of 5. Now I have initialized, say, a of 4 equal to something. Then, when you read him to a of 10, you don't, you are only expanding the size of the array, so you don't lose the content from 0 to 5. Whereas, when you are decreasing the size of the array from a of 10 to a of 3, the location from 4 to 10, they will be removed. So if you have initialized any values, you will lose those values. So whenever you are doing a read -im, if you are increasing the size of the array, no issues. If you are reducing the size of the arrays, you need to be careful not to lose those values which are initialized. Arrays are used in one of the string function also. Let us see that. Look at this function. There is a function called split. I have got a long string, hello, how are you? Each word is separated by a comma. Now, what I want is tokenize. This is called a tokenizing. Find out the strings separated by commas. Load it into this array. So, it will dynamically create this array. So, the moment you do split, give the long string. The second parameter must be the delimiter, basically the separator. Now, load that into array. So, now what I am doing is, I am doing L bound of A to U bound of A. I am printing this array. So what will happen is a of 0 will become hello, a of 1 will become how, then a of 2 will be r, a of 3 will be u. Let us execute this. So a of 0 is hello, a of 1 is how, a of 2 is r, a of 3 is u. So if you want a big string to be split into its substrings, based on some delimiter, it may be pipeline, it may be space, it may be comma or semicolon, you can use any delimiter and then load those substrings into this array, you can use this split command. So in this session we have seen static arrays, dynamic arrays and then using arrays for uh, string functions. Thank you.